This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Stay tuned to hear more. Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany and today we are doing some crocheting. I was looking back on my past videos of what I've been up to and I realized that I haven't made a crochet video in like over a month and I guess I haven't really been crocheting in over a month and I feel like I've been getting better at it and learning new things and trying to figure things out. If you guys recall, my crochet blanket is still in progress. I started this before I actually started the knot pillows. I guess this is a little one that I've been working on and I'm going to get to finishing this eventually. So this will probably be in another video. I feel like it's gonna be like winter time by the time I finish this. And I wanted to make another video kind of dedicated to a project similar to the last one. If you guys didn't watch me paint my fish, you really should because low key, I really missed making those videos. And if you guys like those videos, I think I'm gonna try to do those more where I just kind of like pick a project and do it. I feel like I just like make more art that way. And that's overall the goal. I love doing my small business on the side too, but I just feel like I've been so fulfilled with like making a couple of pieces the past few weeks. So today I had an idea that I've been wanting to execute for a while. I wanted to make this little sheep pouch. I actually saw this photo of this tapestry crochet on Instagram a while ago. I just had it in my brain. It just resonated a lot with me, you know? It's just these little sheep in a meadow and I think it's really, really cute. And I've seen a couple of like tapestry crochets over the past, I don't know, years. I kind of held off on it for a bit. I have another idea, which is to make a little like pencil pouch for it or like just regular pouch, cosmetic pouch. I don't know, you can put anything you want in pouches. I'm going to make the tapestry sheep into a pouch. So that's what I'm gonna be tackling today. I don't quite know how it's gonna go. I really hope it goes well, but I feel like I have confidence that I'm gonna be able to make it work even though I've never done a tapestry crochet before. But first thing I need to do is run to the yarn store. I really wish I lived near like a beautiful yarn store that has like hand dyed yarn and stuff like that because I feel like that would be perfect for this project, but I don't really live near any of those. So that's not really an option for me. So I'm just gonna run to the regular yarn store um, and kind of survey the lands and see what we can find and what we can use from there. But no, I feel like normally I have pretty good um, memory of like what's in my yarn store, but this time I literally don't know. So let's just go and check. Okay, so here's my yarn haul. We have this white one that I think looks really good with these two green ones. I really want this to turn out really pretty. So I'm gonna get some pretty yarn and we'll see what happens, <laughs> but it's cute so far. Some yarn. So these are some of the, I got this one and it's bamboo. Bootiful. So I guess it's made out of bamboo. Is there a material on here? Oh, 50% cotton, 50% viscose from bamboo. So I don't know what that indicates at all. Maybe for like garments, it makes it more breathable. I don't know. Um, but I got this white one. I got this yarn topia uh, gray one that I'm gonna use for the little heads and the legs of the sheep. And then I also got these two green also in the bamboo-tiful. I ended up getting this gray color instead of the black because I. I feel like it would just be too contrasting. I kind of want this to be like a softer looking pouch. And then I got this white, but I feel like I low key might not need that one because I remembered on my drive home that I have this very pretty yarn that has a little bit of sparkle to it. I don't know. It does look a little bit darker, but it's cute. So maybe we could use that. I'm not too sure. Can you see how sparkly it is on camera? I don't know if it really shows well. Maybe I'll have to take it out into like the sunlight, but this truly is a beautiful yarn. It feels great. I forgot what it was made out of. That really hasn't been relevant relevant to me in my crocheting journey so far because I did start a project with the other yarns. Let me show you. I have high key contained and kept them in the bag that I bought them in, but I have these two other blues that are so pretty and they were so expensive. And I started working on this while I was in Philadelphia for my potential fish, you know, and then I would just make it really long and we have a really long fish. And I'm still working on finishing this. The point is that I do have two more of these yarns, but I just haven't made anything from it. Put it back on the wall because that's just where it's lived. But these are the yarns that we got going on. And I feel like this color palette actually looks really cute. I wasn't entirely sure of what I was looking for. I just kind of wanted to go and see if there was any pretty yarn and then we would make it work from there. I like to go and manage my expectations from what I actually find in the store. These are what we got and I think we are 
ready to start now. I am really happy with the way these two greens look though. They're very similar to the green that I usually like to work with. So I say we just start. I've been looking up a lot of patterns online. But I'm not quite finding one I like. So I think I'm gonna just tweak one a bit and then we will see if that works out. I feel like I only need to make a few mild adjustments. Okay, you guys, I made my own alpha pattern. I actually wasn't planning on putting this much work into it. I don't know if it's gonna work in the round, but I low-key kind of want to try it, so I'm just gonna get started. Um, I don't entirely know what I'm doing, but this is so far 55 across. I'm, I guess I'm just gonna dive right into it. Okay, I really wasn't expecting to make an entire pattern like this, but I did. Here's what it looks like, kind of. I'm debating on whether or not I might actually sell this pattern for this pouch. Normally, I don't like to sell patterns. I haven't really made many patterns anyway, but the few that I have, I prefer to just sell the products made, but this I feel like is gonna be so ambitious that I'm never gonna make another one of these to sell. I am ready to start crocheting. I got my coffee drink. I just found out that they have these at coffee. Costco. I don't know if it's every Costco. I don't really know how, but they're like a dollar each at Costco right now. And I bought 40 of them, probably not 40. I bought like 20 of them. I bought a lot of them, okay? I just feel like this is the perfect amount because when I go out to drink boba, low key, this is how much I want. And this is so much cheaper than boba because getting boba is like seven, eight dollars and this is one. And it's a better portion for me because I feel like I drink this much boba anyway normally. And then I just kind of have to finish the rest because I already bought it, you know? I feel like I kind of hopped off this for a sec, but now I'm back on it. All right, I'm doing my first official yarn change. I'm trying to find the center pull. That's the outside one. Where is it? Where is it? I hate doing this. Where is it? The other one was so easy to find. Are you being so for real right now? Bruh. Oh, wait, no, that's the outside one. Okay, I found like this bundle. Dude, that sucked. Wait, did I even find it? I'm making a mess because I can't find this stupid center pole. But now I'm like in too deep and I have to find it. Okay, it's somewhere in here. Dude, this sucks. Oh my God. So I don't entirely know a lot of the rules for crocheting. So I'm just gonna double knot this on. I feel like it's fine, you know. Slide this down. First official color change. So this is what we have so far. And here is the first like row done, I guess. So you can tell that this side is the sheep side and this side is the little gingham side. I still have many questions. I'm still trying to figure them out, but we are working through it. So I'm gonna do a couple more rows now and hopefully we'll hit the sheet soon. I think other than the initial mistake of chaining a little bit too much or something like that, everything else has been smooth sailing, going really well. So I wanna take a quick break and talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. My pattern might actually end up going on Squarespace. If you guys are interested enough, you should comment it down below. I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video because they have been the platform that I've been using to make my own website. And they're one of the biggest reasons why I'm able to sell my art online because honestly, otherwise, I think I'd be too confused. Squarespace's commerce tools have seriously been a lifesaver and they've just been my absolute favorite. Also, my website is able to look absolutely beautiful from them. So I am so proud to say that they're the sponsor of today's video as well. They're the reason that I'm able to sell my art online and make a living from it. And as you can tell, it's super easy for me to switch out my products, add new ones, and it just makes the whole process really easy and streamlined for me. They also have amazing SEO tools to help you get discovered online and their commerce tools are definitely by far my favorite. Their rates are super reasonable. So if you guys want to check it out, please head to Squarespace dot com forward slash tiffany wang and you can use the code tiffany wang for discount off your first purchase of a website or domain comment down below if you want to see this crochet pattern in my website and now let's get back into the vlog okay so i think it's starting to get to the point where it's making sense now do you know what i mean like i feel like in the beginning everything is just so all over the place that like i high key can't tell what's going on this is what the back is looking like but the next row when we chain and turn is where we're gonna start the sheeps we're gonna have to go through the plaid side too just the back side that's what one of the grass strands looks like. I am a bit concerned about how clean this design is going to look because I've never done an alpha pattern. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. It might be okay. The yarn that I'm using is a thinner one, so hopefully that'll make it a little bit easier. But this is what we have so far and it'll be folded. It hasn't really started folding in on itself yet. And we just hit our first sheep officially. I guess there's going to be two on this row. So I'm going to tie in this dark color. And now that I'm looking at it, I feel like maybe this isn't enough color contrast like now that i'm about to actually work with it so i'm debating on using this one that i have left over from my lemur 
I might not actually need a lot of this black yarn. Maybe I'll do what you can do with embroidery floss and I will just cut a piece of it. Make a tiny little, I forgot what it's called when you make a little like ball of yarn from your skein. So I'm just gonna try to separate these. I don't feel like this is what you're supposed to do with yarn, but I'm gonna try it anyway. I made a tiny little ball of yarn. I feel like it's low-key still a little bit thicker than that one, but I don't wanna make it too thin, so I feel like this will be okay. Cutie little jolly baby. So this is what we will use. Um, this is from when I was like a literal like five-year-old. So I'm really nostalgic about that clip and it's just been sitting on my desk. It really hasn't had any purpose. Bring this thread back over here and then I can do one then two, and then this comes back over here. This is so much more complicated. I feel like maybe watching from a third party than me actually doing it. Okay, so according to the pattern, we just did this one and this one, and then this one. That's what it looks like from above, and that's what it looks like from the side. Oh, it actually looks pretty neat from the side. I'm kind of impressed. We'll see what happens after the next few rows, because it's like a lot of things can change, you know, but so far pretty good. Oh my gosh, and now it's time to add in the first sparkle yarn. Everything's just getting attached to this light green one because it doesn't really have any use otherwise. Oh, it looks so good. Sparkle sheep. I hope these come out looking like sheep. That's really my only request, I think. Nice. We have a, the tiniest bit of sparkle peeking through right now. I am just so happy every time I get to use it, especially on this plaid pattern because it's so consistent. The sheep have yet to become super consistent. So now we have transitioned from the white yarn back to the dark green. The bag shape is starting to form. This is the inside. It looks kind of crazy. You see the vision? <laughs> it's kind of coming together. I'm pretty happy. Here's an update. I've been working on this for quite a bit now. It's been super satisfying though, because like every single stitch is something different, something new. Absolutely love this gingham back. I'm so glad I chose to do this. And it's getting easier. I think the hardest part is the rows with all the little legs. Um, the gingham side is always much neater than the other side, but it's not too bad. I've been trying to give it a good stretch like every chance I get to make sure that the pattern has like the room to breathe, but. Okay, and after one night of crocheting, here's what we got. We're halfway through. I'm starting the transition into the lighter shades. I hope that's gonna look good. It might like wash the sheep out. IDK. I guess if it looks awful, I'll just take it out, but that will suck. Okay, friends, I am very tired. I think I'm just going to call it a night tonight because I think we made some really good progress. I'm about like halfway done, so I think it's pretty good. I do really love fiber art, being a fiber artist. I don't know. I don't know if I can call myself a fiber artist because I don't feel like I do this enough, but I really do enjoy making stuff and just making physical things, you know, I think is so, so nice. So, but yes, with the progress check, everything is going according to plan. So I'm going to do that for the rest of tonight off camera. I'm gonna call it a night here, so I will catch up with you guys in the morning. Goodbye, everyone. Okay, it is the next morning. Got another coffee, and I'm returning back to my desk after a long night of playing League. Fix my desk. I love this desk organizer because now that I have it, I'm able to tuck in all my keyboards and I can move whatever it is I'm working on, which is why I've been able to film in my room a lot more, but <laughs> we are back. Welcome back. I did pretty much the rest of it off camera because honestly, you guys get the gist of it. It is looking, it, first of all, it looks so cute on camera. So I am so happy about it. Here is the front with the sheeps and then the back. Ah! It's a beautiful gingham. I love it so much. As you guys have been seeing, I've been pulling at this and stretching at it a lot because it has a lot of tension held in it. This is what the inside currently looks like. It's kind of crazy. On the back row, we just started the second, this new row of color, but I only have one row. So I have many debates in my mind about what I want to do right now. First one was whether or not I want to do one more row across because I like it being longer more than is tall and I don't want it to end up square. And my my second thought is if I want to add a trim, which I decided to sleep on it and I decided that I do want to add a trim. So we're going to add a little scalloped edge. And the third thing is I was researching online blocking my work and I've decided that I'm going to try to wet block this for the first time ever in my life. I've never wet blocked something. Kind of nervous, but kind of excited. Also because this little grass part is 
on the edge and that kind of bothers me. So we're just gonna go around one more row, super quick, and then we're gonna add the trim. I literally love this. Look at it. It's just been sitting on my desk like this and it just makes me so happy every time I walk by it, which I guess isn't often because in reality, I'm actually sitting by it all the time working on it. Look at it. Look at the back. Since I'm going to be adding a zipper and a lining to this pouch, I have been trying to be a little bit more conscious of the inside. So the bottom, like the deep inside part doesn't matter, but the rim here, as you can see, there's a lot of floaters down here, but at the top one, I've been sealing them in so that we can have a nice, a nicer looking edge when we do sew the zipper on. And the only reason I didn't do that with the rest of the work, it can make the fabric end up looking bulkier, so I prefer not to do it. Wait, oh my gosh, I just realized that I can cut off the dark green yarn because I don't need it anymore. I'm sorry, I don't know where my scissors are, so I'm just gonna use this exacto knife, but <gasps> we are no longer tethered to this color. All of the yarn that we're not using to over here. <gasps> The workspace has just gotten so clean. So I'm only gonna use this light green for now and I'm just gonna do the rest of this loop. But when I hit here, I'm gonna have to use the white to start making scallops. So I'm gonna have to encase this white yarn all the way around the border. I high key forgot how fast it is to crochet with just one color. I'm just flying through this border. I'm just crocheting over the edge and that white one. And then as you can see, it peeks out every once in a while, but if I just pull on this, it goes away. When your yarns start to wrap around themselves, this is the life hack. This only really works with two colors or if they're all evenly wrapped, but satisfying, amazing. All right, I think like 10 minutes later, we are officially done with this light green. What a joyous, momentous occasion. Oh my gosh. And now we are left with one. I am so happy. It's like a normal crochet project again. But here it is. Now it's time to attempt a scalloped edge. Here's what we got so far. Super cute. It's so tiny. I love it. But also my mom just brought me a homemade red bean little, it's like a bean. It's a hong dou bean. I don't know what that is in English, but it's tasty. Thanks mom. Okay, little scallops. Okay, that's cute. Here is some of the scallops so far. It looks so cute. Oh my gosh. <gasps> she is free. Amazing. So happy. I'm going to attempt to wet block this. I've never done that before. I don't know if it'll actually loosen any of the stitches, but we're gonna figure it out. The yarn that I used is bamboo and cotton, I believe. I don't know what this one is, but it was a high quality yarn. So Just consulted my literal own vlog. The white is merino wool, which I did a little bit of light Googling. I think you can block wool. You just have to be gentle with it, which I was gonna be pretty gentle with this anyway. I'm a little bit scared, but I feel like it'll be fine. We'll see what it does to the stitches. I did cold water. Put her in here. Oh my gosh, sheep underwater. Help, sheep underwater. I'm just gonna let it soak and submerge for like 10-ish minutes. It wants to float, so I'm trying to get all the air out. Sheep underwater. Okay, friends, welcome to the downstairs. Um, here is our baby. She's still soaking in here. I got my towel. Here is the Totoro towel of use today. So now I'm just gonna try to get as much water out as possible. Okay, so now it looks like this. I'm trying to trust the process. Okay, so I was originally going to try to like pin this down, block it like the more traditional sense, but this is so, it came out so thick, which I do really enjoy. So I'm not really able to do it that way. So I'm just gonna leave this out to chill in the sun for a bit while we do the inner lining. So here it is laying on my porch right now. The back looks flatter too. I'd like to say it looks flatter. I don't know if I'm just like totally lying to myself. Okay, so back in my room now. It's hectic out here. We don't need any of these anymore. What we do need 
is this because I'm gonna make a lining now and I'm gonna use this super cute little baby fabric that I've had. Fun story about this zipper. I actually thought I didn't have any more cream or green zippers and I was about to run to the store and luckily I found one in my giant bucket of yarns. I have this piece of paper, which is the size that I want my pouch to be. So we're gonna cut out a piece that's just a little bit bigger. This is the current baby that's been unfortunately stabbed with a needle, but he holds my needles. Normally I'd like to do a nice little blanket stitch all the way, but I think I need to leave more of a seam allowance. So I'm unfortunately just doing a very boring running stitch all the way down. But I feel like by the time I finish this little pouch, sheet should be dry. Here's what it's looking like. Can you see my tiny little running stitches? Hand stitch. And now I'm just gonna flip it inside out to check this little pouch. I mean, technically it's not gonna be like that. It's still gonna go and sit in there like this, but I'm gonna go and retrieve the sheet from outside. Is it perfect? No. Do I mind it? Not at all. Cause I really do like that it looks, um, if I wanted something not handmade, I could have just screen printed this, but this is what it's looking like. Here she is. She's a little puffed up right now because I, I opened it. But I do think it's at least a little bit flatter, which I will take. Honestly, it could have ended up looking the exact same and I wouldn't have been very mad about it. I feel like the folds are definitely better now. I don't mind it. I keep opening it like this and it looks like a cat hat when I do that. You can see that I do think it's a little bit flatter. I've had quite a bit of practice with this, with the ducky pouches that I was making and selling on my website for a while. I'm gonna work extra hard to keep my stitches neat for this part. So hard on this that I can't lose steam now, you know. There we have my very tiny stitches. I am halfway through. So one side of the zipper is done here. Let's go ahead and do the other side. This is what the stitching looks like on this side. So we're almost there. Here's her all zipped up. With the scallops, I am so glad I added those. We have officially finished our little sheep pouch. I think it's so cute. I feel like we need to put some stuff in it so she's not so flat, but here's the inside. Real nice, we got the little suns. What can I put in here? I have this tiny little miffy that I got in New York that's been on the floor this whole time. We could free her and put her in here. Look how cute this thing is. So we can put her in here. Oh my gosh. What else do I need to put in here? I don't know. My calicos, my two babies. Literally, <laughs> so cute. We have officially completed the pouch. It fits quite a few things, honestly. It's super cute though. And I think I wanna make more like pouch type functional items. I like cute things, but I also want them to serve a little bit of a purpose. It is so, so cute. I am in love with it. I am so happy. And yeah, this was my first time ever doing an alpha crochet. It came out really good, all things considered, you know? I'm really